What's up guys, Josh Mosman here and welcome to This Week in MXA, episode number 45. It's crazy that we're already this far along. Thanks to O'Neill Racing for sponsoring this series. First, we're gonna talk about the MXGP Championship and the crazy battles we have going on at the front of the pack there with just two races left. Second, we're gonna talk about Justin Hill, the new MXA podcast, and Justin Hill coming back to racing for 2022. Third, we're also gonna talk about me racing out of Glen Helen, winning my first race in a long time, and some more topics as well, so let's get into it. Starting off with the MXGP segment, we gotta give a big shout out to Yamaha for winning the 250 championship with Maxime Renault. They won it with two races left in the season, so a full two rounds early. Congrats to Maxime, won the 250 championship, star racing Yamaha, and now Yamaha over in Europe, dominating the 250 class. Then in the 450 class, Jeremy Sewer, he's a buddy of mine. I first met him back in 2011 in Italy, racing the Junior World Championships. Long story short, Jeremy Sewer is an awesome guy, super humble, super stylish, and throws the biggest whips and scrubs on a motorcycle that you ever see. Um, he also raced with the Pirelli MX sand tire, uh, paddle tire on his rear on the YZ450 at the race this past week. And uh, pretty impressive because the track is so hard packed. It doesn't look like it would suit a sand tire, but it's very important for the deep starts. He obviously did well. He got the whole shot in the first moto, so he won the first moto even though he had a small crash. And then he also uh, finished second in the second moto and got the overall. So very cool to see Jeremy Sewer win. As for Honda's Tim Geyser, he's now one point out of the championship. He's a three-time world champion and uh, he's been riding well this year, keeping the, the, the situation tight at the front. And uh, he had the red plate for a while, but now he's just one point off of Kawasaki's Roman Fevre. So Roman Fevre, he's a one-time world champion in the 450 MXGP class. He's now winning the championship. And this is actually the first time that Kawasaki has had the red plate in the MXGP championship since 2014, when Gautier Paulin won the season opener at Qatar. So pretty interesting, really cool for Kawasaki, really cool for Roman Fevre. And uh, as for the KTM boys, it was a little bit of drama, but it was really cool to see that, that the, the books were open, open wide for everybody to see. Um, Caroli, he let Jeffrey Hurlings pass him back in the second moto after Hurlings had two major crashes. Cairoli let Hurlings get by him. Hurlings got into fourth. He gained two valuable points from Tony Caroli and Hurlings was very open and honest about it on his Instagram post and on the KTM press release in his quotes after the race. Hurlings said, it didn't make it easy on myself in the last two GPs here. It has been tough, but all is still possible. Thanks to Tony. Only the greatest and biggest champions would do that. To me, he not only showed his loyalty to KTM, but helped me a lot because those are two very important points. Only a real team member would do that. George as well. I had to pass him three times in that second moto and it was a real team effort and I cannot thank him enough. Tony Cairoli after the race said, in the last moto, I had the pace to go a little bit faster, but I did not want to get in the middle of the fight for the championship. Jeffrey made a crash in front of me and again, there was a big gap. I had settled for fourth place when I saw Jeffrey was coming on the last two laps. For me, fourth or fifth was not that important because I knew I wouldn't have been on the podium anyway, so I gave my position. I hope a few points more will help him and KTM for the championship, and that's KTM's goal for this year. So long story short, there's two rounds left in the championship. They're also in Italy. They're going to Mantova, the same track where we had the Motocross of Nations over a month and a half ago. Um, also interesting to know, out of the 18 MXGP World Championship rounds, seven of them will be held in Italy. So two more rounds left. They're racing this Saturday and next Wednesday over in Italy. And if you want to watch it, MXGP TV. Um, it's about $12.75 um, US dollars to uh, get the MXGP pass to watch the races live online. So. That's all for the MXGP Championship. Intense battles at the front, and it's really cool to see Hurlings being open and honest that his KTM teammates helped him out to get those extra two points. Next up, I got a really cool interview with my good buddy, Justin Hill. Let's hear from him now. It was the first glance that I had at myself where I had seen where, you know, cause I'm used to me here. Like this is where my dirt bike, dirt biking is. Yep. And with my current physical position, I'm like, uh, right there you know what I mean and it just bothered me I'm like I have too many years in this and I'm too like capable with this to feel this way when I do it at my physical prime you know what I mean like I'm just pedaling backwards and I don't even not even sure if I want to be pedaling backwards you know um so that just got me really fired up I'm just like 
I think I want to do this again. All right, so I had a really good time catching up with my buddy Justin. He didn't race at all in 2021. He's back for racing in 2022. Got a full 30 minute podcast that you can listen to on iTunes and on Spotify. You can click the link through our website to listen to the full podcast there. If you like the podcast, leave a rating and a comment or a review on the podcast. Subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen to it so that we can know uh, what you think about it. And if you want to continue hearing more podcasts from the MXA Wrecking Crew, or if you want to read the full interview, you can check it out also on our website on the homepage, motocrossactionmag.com. Next up, we did some racing out at Glen Helen this past weekend for October Cross. It happens every year, I think it's been 19 years in a row now, that REM has been doing REM on the main track at Glen Helen the weekend before the World Vet Championships at Glen Helen. So World Vet brings in riders from all over. Uh, this past weekend at October Cross, we had people there from the East Coast, we had people there from Alaska, uh, some guys there from Puerto Rico that I got to meet and talk to, and uh, more people from, from out of state and even out of the country that I didn't get to meet but uh, really good time. A lot of good people come in for October crosses. It's a great warm up for the World Vet Championship. So really fun. We had a new layout. Um, I ended up going 1-1 in the 450 uh, Open Pro class. So that was super cool. My first time winning since I won the 24 hour with the Pro Circuit MXA team with uh, Zach Commons, Preston Campbell and Carlin Gardner on my team. So before that I won an REM race, but it was a while ago. And it seems like every time I race, um, I'm always doing pretty well, especially if it's at Glen Helen, I can lead laps, but I always end up second. <laughs> and uh, no matter who, how many good guys are there, if there's five fast guys or one fast guy, it seems like I was always ending up second. So it felt good to win. Got a little post-race interview, um, talking from the first moto and second moto here, that you can listen to and watch some clips from that day. Uh, Josh Moseman, how do we feel after that Moto One victory? I'm fine. Oh, you can actually squeeze a little bit better than I expected. I got arm bump, I got tired, but it was fun. Good job, buddy. Third, well, third place around the first turn, second turn. I uh, passed into, I stayed third for like two laps, passed into second on a new section sliding up. It was like a really tricky section going up the hill. Passed into second, and then the next lap I passed in the same spot, I think. Yeah, I think the same spot in the first, so it's fun. First moto, 450 win. Dude, I finally won a race. I haven't won here in so long. Every time I come, there's always one guy that beats me, so it feels good to finally win. I've led a lot of laps lately. I finally can take one to the checkers. <laughs> it was good. Money, one, one. First time winning in a long time. And I'm taking my wife to Thai food tonight. I'm getting a Thai iced tea, cashew chicken, spicy number five, medium, and some, probably some fried pot stickers because we're going for it. Well, not great. Probably going back to the pot stickers, or the cashew chicken. But yeah, second moto, I got the lead early, but then I got tired halfway through running stock suspension again. I think pretty soon it's going to be time to put some. Uh, some valving in here, some, different, some stiffer suspension, so it should be fun. Good times. Thanks, Josh, for filming. We also did some testing out of Glen Helen this past week, trying out lots of different FCP engine mounts. Let's get into this little brief interview with Chris Palm from Sweden, who owns FCP engine mounts. All right, so we are out here testing engine mounts on KTM 450 today. I got Chris Palm from FCP. He is Swedish, um, so I got to touch up on my Swedish. I'm 50% Swedish. My mom is from there. So uh, I'll say this, uh, Ja och Kristoffer testar motorfasten on the KTM 450 today. Um, Chris doesn't speak English, I don't think. No, no, not at all. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm struggling real hard. <laughs> Just kidding, he speaks plenty of English. So Chris, what were we uh, doing today? Like what was a quick rundown of what we tested? 
So today we tested our uh, FCP engine mounts on the KTM 450. Um, we offer one engine mount uh, for motocross, but the development side, we do make different engine mounts to kind of see what works best where. So we brought out some prototype stuff uh, for Josh to try it out today. We had some stiff ones, soft ones, a couple with holes, with other, um, and, and yeah, we just kind of wanted to run by a little bit of how we develop our parts and kind of figure out what we like. Totally, and uh, it was fun feeling the differences. We got to ride some Blake Baggett parts, right? Yep. Um, Blake Baggett settings, we got to ride Joey Sabachi settings, Correct, yep. and Cooper Webb settings today, um, all with the FCP engine mounts. So uh, yeah, pretty good stuff. Me and Ezra both took turns on them. And then I'm gonna be racing this Saturday here at Glen Helen, we got a new layout. I'm gonna be racing on the KTM 450 and uh, running stock suspension, stock bike, with some FCP mounts, and then I'll probably go back to back um, with either the stiffer mounts or maybe the stock mounts. So it should be a fun day. Yeah, really cool. He'll be waving the Swedish flag. Yeah, have Swedish over here. He's full Swedish. Jag pratar svenska lite, men jag förstår mycket. So that's for our Swedish followers. Han har väldigt bra svenska. Svenska är väldigt bra. Tack, tack. All right. All right, also got a pretty funny interview with MXA's Brian Medeiros. He's the owner of Ecolu Suspension Co. It's his own suspension company that he came up with. Um, the, the name Ecolu is, comes from Hawaii. That's where he's born and raised. And uh, MXA Test Rider, he's done a lot of photo shoots for us, a lot of testing. He helps us out with building bikes and fixing bikes especially. He puts a lot of time on our Suzuki 250s and 450s and he's a great addition to the MXA Wrecking Crew. All right. Brian Medeiros, Suzuki, and you're doing uh, Ecolu, Ecolu, how do you say it? Ecolu Suspension Co. Ecolu Suspension. So you're testing suspension, you're building suspension for your yep. buddies, selling it. And today you're riding with some KYB forks yep. that you just got built up for the Suzuki. Yep, yep. Uh, Kite Boy KYB helped me out with some KYB components for the 450. Uh, nice. It's just stock 250 stuff. Nice. Um, try to switch it up from the stock show of the BFRC. Yeah. I got it decent, but still it's not like a conventional shock. So I gotcha. went with this, this conventional 250F shock and it worked really well today. Nice. And then what did you do to the engine mounts? Uh, the out. engine mounts, like we uh, removed the top engine mount bolt just because uh, from the first moto I felt at lean angle the bike was really rigid and and would want to push the front end away so by taking out that top engine mount bolt it kind of calmed the chassis down especially for me being 5'6 135 pounds so that helped out a lot and then uh, we put some ODI ODI bars on there and a uh, works connection uh, clutch purse Nice. From uh, Rocky Mountain and uh, also a worst connection whole shock device. Nice. And you got my favorite grips. Yep, the ODI lock on grips. The first moto, I uh, I had some pro tapers on there, the one third waffle grips, and within five laps, my hands went numb and I couldn't feel the, the brakes. And I think it's just because my hand's so little, I can't, the grip felt kind of wide, so it was hanging on more with my fingers. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, these ODI. Yeah, make V2 lock on grips definitely recommended. And they're sure. easy to put on in between motos, right? Yeah, yeah. Switch them out within five minutes and uh, yeah, it was good to go all moto. And the battle between Ezra and you? Ezra got me today, you know, uh, we felt confident coming into it this morning, but uh, after the first moto, it kind of took the wind out of my sails. <laughs> so uh, we're going to have to train hard for next year. Um, I think we'll get them in the surfing portion of this event, yeah, though. Can. Yeah, so uh, Are we, gonna be we should make. After this? <laughs> yeah, I think. But Ezra only wants to surf like two foot waves, so we gotta wait till it's <laughs> six to eight to all really right. get after it. But uh, no, he got me today. All the MXA boys rode great. Josh, you were ripping. So, okay. how's this Kickstarter work? Oh, this is how you hey. start the bike. Hey, yeah. Because there's no. Is this started or? No. No. Nope. It doesn't start it. You see, this is a multi-purpose tool. Multi. It's, to, it's to start the bike. It holds your funnel while you are putting Changing oil in. Yeah, I saw you do that. And when you go to wash your bike and you're like, man, how am I gonna carry my stand? You put the matrix stand right in here. Bingo. Crazy. Good to go. Yeah, I gotta get one of those on the... I was riding the KTM today. I gotta get one of these things on there. That's, that's interesting. Yep. All right, yep, cool deal. Yep. Oh, and I got this Yosha on here that I found in my storage that I've had for about six years. Good times. It's about blew the end cap off, but <laughs> uh, we're all right. All right, RM Army, here yep. we go. Let's see you start it. First, First kick. kick every time.
All right, guys, that's it for this week in MXA episode 45. Thank you for tuning in. If you like the podcast or if you're interested in checking it out, click the link below. Also, motocrossactionmag.com for the latest news, reviews, race results, product tests, bike tests, shootouts, and more. We got it all on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel as well to stay up to date with our latest videos. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.